Hello everyone, I'm Luba Mira and thank you for joining me. If you're visiting for the first time, welcome to my channel and if you're returning, it's great to have you back. If you like the things I share with you, remember to hit those like and subscribe buttons. By selecting that little bell, you'll get notified every time I post a new video so you never miss out on any of the crafty goodness. I'm really excited to share today's project because it's a car tutorial and product review in one. Recently, I came across Recollections LED light kit from Michaels, and honestly, what caught my eye was the price. Previously, I've used Chibitronics' kit, but it's always been really expensive, so I never really invested too much time or money in creating light-up cards. However, on the other hand, light-up cards are always a crowd-pleaser and rather special. I was thrilled to see that Recollections kit is an affordable option that retails around $13. In comparison with the other brand, this is a steal considering what's included. Let's take a look at the kit itself. It comes with 23 pieces, which include four batteries, 16 feet of copper tape, and 18 LED lights. There is plenty of tape to practice with in this kit, and the lights are stickers which can be peeled off carefully and adjusted on a project. There are instructions on the back and a rudimentary drawing of the general concept of creating a circuit. Now I'm no electrician, but I managed to figure it out and I'm going to show you how to do it too. I'm going to create a card with a simple light up background, which in my opinion is the easiest type of light up card. Let's get into the video. First I started with stamping my images in black ink and then coloring them with Copic markers. I'm using the Blue Sky set from Lawn Fawn. My coloring was quite simple. I started with my darkest color and then blended it out with the lightest one. For the exact colors, please see my description below. I also added some sparkle with a glitter pen after I finished coloring my balloons.
blended my background using Distress Oxide inks in shades of blue. I used Tumble the Glass, Broken China, Salty Oceans, Blueprint Sketch, and Black Soot. I started with my lightest and then worked to the darkest ink on a small panel, which will end up being a mini slimline card. I cut some stars into my background, but I didn't have a mini slimline die to work with. However, I did have the Lawn Fawn Snowy Backdrop die. You can use these types of dies for mini slimlines. They just end up being half an inch shorter than your regular slimline panel. What I like to do is trim the sides to create a matte border around the panel when done. You just have to make sure to keep your paper straight in the die when running it through your machine or the panel can come out lopsided. After die cutting my background, I poked out any little bits that didn't fall out and trimmed the panel on the sides to create that matte border I spoke of earlier. I also trimmed a piece of vellum to line the back of the panel. This will act as camouflage later on so you can't see the copper tape through the holes. I colored the stars yellow on the back of the vellum. <music> Having all the parts, I can now start to assemble the light up base. I start off by tracing a light pencil line around my ink panel directly onto the card base. This will be the perimeter I can work with when placing my circuit. 
The first thing I create is the switch or the press me here spot that will turn on my lights and hold the battery. Before starting, take note of how your circuit needs to run. There is a positive and negative connection that never comes in contact. Both the battery and the LED lights have a positive and negative side that will correspond to the positive or negative connection respectfully. I know that can sound confusing, but just keep this in mind. Plus to plus, minus to minus. To create my switch, I used a leftover piece of vellum just big enough for the battery and folded it in half so it would wrap around it like a taco. This will hold the battery and create the connection I need. I'm going to be sticking the vellum on the inside of the border I drew, but I can't place it directly on or next to the line because I have to remember the foam tape that's going to go around and hold everything in place. To make it easier, I place some double stacked foam tape along the side and then glue my switch in place. mark a positive and negative path for myself. Now if you haven't guessed, the positive circuit will go to the plus and the negative circuit to the minus. The path you create will vary from card to card because it depends on where you want to place your lights. What you have to remember is that the positive and negative never touch, but can run parallel to each other if you have multiple lights. My circuit will have several lights, but they don't have to be placed in a specific place since I'll be lighting an entire panel. Had I created a card where I had a specific element, like a window or Christmas tree lights, I'd have to mark the places I needed the lights to be first, and then I'd have to run the circuit according to those positions. We don't have to worry about that in this card, but I'll show you another video with specific circuit paths in the future. I work on my positive connection first. The tape is easy enough to use and you can fold it over on itself. Just remember not to cut or tear it. I open up the flap and then place the tape so that it wraps around and over the flap, then along the top of it. A bone folder is really handy because it smooths the tape out and helps when I have to make a turn in my circuit. To make a turn, I turn the tape over on itself. I first bend it in the opposite direction of the turn and then using the bone folder, I hold it in place before bending it back in the right direction and removing the bone folder to press it into place. The negative connection is a lot easier to place because there is no flap to wrap around. It simply goes from the inside of the switch and runs alongside of the positive connection, never touching, but close enough for the lights to bridge the two. After both paths are placed, I go ahead and stick my lights down. Each light has a positive and negative side and they are labeled on the top. Simply match up the corresponding side and stick the lights so that they touch each tape, negative to negative, positive to positive. If everything is right, you should have light when you press the switch down onto your battery. I've noticed that for best results, make sure that those copper sensors on the lights firmly and directly come in contact with the tape. Eureka, we have light.
time to close up the card and it's pretty much the same process as in a shaker. I place double stacked foam tape along the inside of my pencil lines and some extra foam tape and foam dots around my battery so it won't roll out of place. like to place a stack of foam dots on the inside fold of my switch to act like a spring so the switch isn't always on. You may not need this if there is enough room for the switch to lift on its own. Another thing to add is a temporary strip if you plan on sending your card through the mail. This preserves the battery if your card gets pressed while in transit. I usually leave a section of foam tape with its release tape on next to the battery. I can feed a piece of tape or ribbon through there so it will keep the battery from coming in contact with the switch. When the person gets the card, he or she can remove it to work the card. I close up the card by putting my panel in place and then I can attach the balloons using some foam dots. I used the sky's the limit included in the set, but it was too long. I snipped it into three and then using Versamark ink and white embossing powder, I individually stamped each section before heat embossing it. I used scissors to trim around the sentiment and then attached it using foam dots. Lastly, I added some clear dew drops to the front for a little bit more sparkle. <music>
overall, I'm very impressed with the light kit. I found it easy to use, although there was a little learning curve when placing the lights at first. I find it much more affordable than competitive products, and as a result, I think it's more forgiving and will cause less grief or guilt if you find that it's not your cup of tea, which happens in the crafting world. I can't begin to count how many things I thought I'd love and they just didn't work out, and I'm pretty sure it cost me more than 13 bucks. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you'd be interested in giving this LED light kit a try. I'd love to see your projects, so don't forget to tag me and join me next time for another creation. Please don't forget to leave your comments below. I love hearing from you, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye!